everyone and welcome to the learning ladder today i thought i'd do what's in our workboxes week um we do regular cr traditional curriculum monday to thursday and then friday is off on friday where we do our unit study my literature unit and then just some fun activities okay we always start with language arts and i'll be showing our schedule in a couple of weeks uh, i think it's scheduled towards the end of october if you've got any other i'm um, actually all my videos are scheduled up to the end of november so if you've got any video requests definitely let me know and then I can put them on the list for uh, December. So for language arts, our main curriculum is learning language arts through literature. So I keep my daughter's uh, work uh, for her subjects in these little plastic folders. We we've done we did this last year, and I think we did it the year before as well, and it worked really well. So inside the work box uh, tray, the files for that day. Um, now I'm just going to show you a sample lesson. This is from learning language arts for literature. This is the teacher's guide, and then you have the corresponding... Uh, worksheets. So you always start off uh, on a day one where it's copy work so you'll read the passage and then you'll copy the passage and then you'll ask something in, in addition. So for example this one is imagine the scene described in the passage, discuss with your teacher how you think it happened and draw a picture of it. Then day two is reviewing spelling and then there's an optional enrichment activity which is always in the um, student book and it's a higher order thinking skill activity so word searches, anagrams, those types of things. And then we've got some spelling to do. Then um, we have got some dictation. There's also another enrichment activity. And then on day three, we're um, reviewing the uh, three sounds that Ed can make at the end of a sentence. Oh, end of the sentence, end of a word even. And uh, some phonics. And what I really like about learning language arts for literature is you then re reuse the literature passage that you start at the beginning of the week and you're underlining and finding things in um, in the passage that match the skill that you're learning. So you're putting application onto this, the grammar skills um, and spelling skills, which I really like. Then day four, we're writing some sentences about uh, the story um, and then also a writing about an unusual adventure that you'd like to experience. Um, then we've got some vocabulary. We are, she's reading the story to me. We've got some comprehension question, a comprehension check with some question discussing. Dis I can't speak. Discussion questions. There is another optional enrichment activity again with those critical thinking skills. There's a journal entry, and then there's some handwriting practice. And it's the similar same format for each of the lessons. Obviously, different uh, different skills that you're working on um, for grammar and everything else. And then at the end of the week, there is always a review activity page. Now, what you can do is during the the specific days if you feel like your student or your child needs more assistance with any of the skills that they're teaching then you can go to the review activities page and there are additional activities that you can do for that specific skill so again I really like that so that was just a random lesson um, that I picked to show you but it's the same throughout and then the student has the appropriate pages to match um, with obviously the sections for them to complete and what I do is I just pop them into her binder a little folder and at various points during the course there are four literature links so there are four books that go along with the uh, curriculum and for each one there'll be a different set of skills so for, exi for example this one is using Madeline and we're comparing and contrasting, contrasting we're using the encyclopedia we're using the internet we're doing comprehension illustrations map skills and vocabulary and then just for, com uh, for comparison sake, then this one is a non-fiction one. So it's a biography, comprehension, dictionary, illustration, internet, legend, oral presentation, sequencing and vocabulary. So there are four different literature links throughout the whole course, throughout the whole uh, year. Um, yeah, and I'm really enjoying this curriculum. It's new to us this year, um, but I am really enjoying it so far. My daughter's really enjoying it so far. Um, and yeah, we've got no complaints with it. Part of the activity she's doing this week for uh, ling learning language arts literature is synonyms. So I've just pulled this ever more uh, synonyms activity uh, to go along with it. I thought that would work really well. And then obviously because it's that time of year um, and my daughter loves anything seasonal and themed stuff, I just found this synonyms and antonyms uh, activity from the Carson Delosa. Uh, what was it? I think it's the seasonal pack, uh, seasonal book to go along with. And they're, are they? Yeah, apples. I think they're apples. <laughs> yeah, they are. And then you just get to put the seeds inside, little pips inside. Um, and that will just go into her notebook, which is hiding all the way at the back over there. 
So every day she'll just do the next lesson um, in, in her student pages and I'll just move this whole folder down the drawers uh, once she's finished. Normally last year um, it was one or two pages had their own their own days and everything else so I used to have five folders but this year the way it's because it's a pdf and it's an ebook sometimes day two is on day three page and everything else so I've just decided to pop them all into one folder and then just move the folders down uh, per day which is no hardship. For spelling we are trialing spelling you see um, so I, I have used uh, all about spelling uh, level one and level two in the past and last year we used Evermore's building spelling skills grade two um, we really liked it I really liked it she really liked it but I'd heard an awful lot about spelling you see and I wanted to give it a try it reminds me a lot of all about spelling but in a slightly different way um, presented in a slightly different way and I wanted to give it a try so what I decided to do was trial it for six weeks because Evermore's building spelling is 30 weeks I think or 30 it's not the full year for us anyway, so um, it was fine to try this for six weeks and then if we didn't like it, she didn't like it, we could always switch back to the Evermore Build and Spelling and we'd still be on track to complete the, the book and everything else. Not necessarily that that really matters, but we would be. Um, however, she really likes this, um, so I'm really impressed and happy. <laughs> She's picking it up amazingly well, which is fantastic. I'll give you a peek inside in a minute to show you what it's like in case you've never seen it before. Um, it comes with these erasable coloured pencils, there are two books, there's a part one and a part two and a little teacher guide with it. If you get it, definitely read the teacher guide because I think that's paramount to this working. Um, but she's loving it, absolutely loving it. And I asked her the other day, because um, we're, I think we're on week five now, and I asked her the other day, how was she feeling about it? Did she want to, um, which did she prefer? Did she prefer Bill and Spelling or this one? And she actually said she wants to continue with Spelling a C. So I'm waiting until the six weeks are up um, to be sure, but I have definitely seen progress um, and she is enjoying it, which is obviously paramount. So it's looking good for spelling you see not that there's anything wrong with building spelling i think it's a great program and we used it last year and it worked really well um but i'm really liking this and she's really liking it okay so i've just opened it randomly um to 8a so every um it goes 8a b c d and e so it's five days and each um a will start off with a different uh, we could actually be the same but generally speaking there are different things that they need to mark so they'll take their yellow colour pencil from the pack which comes with it and they'll mark in uh, the story the relevant vowel chunks that are noted and then every day they have a different section that they copy so they'll copy it every day so they'll mark again the passage they'll copy and then mark it again uh, with the vowel chunks with in yellow in this particular case again Wednesday, Thursday is slightly different, they'll still mark the story but then they actually get to draw a picture and write their own story and she loves doing that. Um, and then on the final day they'll mark the uh, vowel chunks in this particular case and then they'll write, so you'll uh, you'll dictate it to them and they'll write it without looking but they can ask for help if they need to and they'll write it without looking. And then at the end you don't mark how many words they've got wrong, you, might, you mark how many words they've spelt correctly. So I picked C particularly because it was animal themed and we are doing biology this year and I thought it would go really well um, with our, our uh, year. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this one is consonant chunks. This one again is vowel chunks. We've got some bossy R. So that's what that's how it works. So then this one is about uh, silent letters. So we're marking silent e or silent any silent letters. I assume constant chunks bossy r. So in like this case, they'll use blue and purple. But no, she's really she's really enjoying it. And I really I'm really interested in the methodology and um, the philosophy from be, behind the curriculum. If you read the teacher's guide, she explains that the author. Um, no, I'm really enjoying it, so she's really enjoying it. I think we're going to stick with it. But, um, as I said, we're going to wait till week six to be sure, but I'll definitely let you know. As you will notice, the word, there were spelling words in the Learning language, language Arts Literature, and we do do those um, as well. Um, but this is our what I would call our spelling curriculum. Those are just in addition because they're in our Language Arts program. Um, this is our main spelling curriculum. Okay, next we've got handwriting and phonics. So we'll do not all three of them, obviously. Um, we'll split them throughout the week. So 
one day she might do the cursive handwriting, one day she might do the good and beautiful, and one day she might do her explode the code. We alternate it. Um, these are, are cursive, obviously, and then uh, I use the explode the code for an, an additional spelling assistance, and um, she really enjoys it. Uh, so that's why we keep it. I don't think we necessarily have to have it, but she really enjoys it, and that's really important to me. She's still learning a lot from it, and um, we just alternate. So, for example, if we start off on Monday with the good and the beautiful, Tuesday we'll do um, handwriting without tears, Wednesday we'll do explode the code, and we'll just alternate it round. For reading, we are going to use Harcourt trophies this year, as well as uh, as well as four books that I have picked specifically for her to read throughout the year. Then obviously she can read as much as she wants in addition. And they all have uh, literature guides and black books to go with them. So she's currently working on Royal Dahl, Travelling the Chocolate Factory. We haven't started Heartcut Trophies yet. We're going to start it after our uh, half-term break. The reason being is we are going on a field trip to a chocolate factory before we finish for our half-term break. And I wanted to get as far into this as possible. So that's why we haven't started um, Heartcut Trophies yet. But we will do when we come back after our break. Um, and in the meantime, I have just been doing um, some additional comprehension activities. So we are doing a non-fiction writing uh, unit at the moment. One of them is, um, that we're currently working on, well she's almost finished, was taking care of a dog. So a how-to writing project, so how to take care of a dog. So I've got this how to uh, taking care of a dog reading comprehension activity. Um, this is from Twinkle. And once she has read it, it just comes with some questions to answer. So we'll do that next week. As well as continue reading our Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And we do the uh, literature units on a Friday that go along with, with whatever book she's reading. So I'll show you those when we get to our Fun Friday box. Okay, so this is a writing folder. And as I said, she is currently finishing up her lap book, which is on uh, how to take care of a dog. Shortly after we come back from our half-term break, we will be moving on to our, we'll finish our non-fiction writing unit and we'll be moving on to our fairy tale writing unit. I've just got a couple more things I want to do on the non-fiction side before we start. So the how to take care of a dog was just something that I came up with. And then this is uh, from the Evermore uh, how to write a story unit book. And this one is... You can do a group or a guided or an independent. I just pulled them all out, but we're going to do the the independent story. So basically, um, she'll pick her dog because obviously we've been writing about how to take care of dogs. So she'll pick her dog. Uh, there's an action, a conclusion, and then she will so her character character and setting, action and conclusion, and then she'll write her story once she has finished with her uh, lap book on how to take care of dogs. She just has a writing folder, so we have a a working a working progress and then a completed um, little folder that she can put all her assignments in and things. Her lap book isn't in there because it was too big. I've also got a fun seasonal uh, themed one for us to do at some point this week. So we've got the haunted house, I see, I hear, I feel, I smell and I taste and um, then she can uh, trans... when she's finished those then we will probably uh, turn it into a story if she would like to do that. This is probably for fun it's educational but it's fun so if she wants to continue and make it into a story then we will and then the final non-fiction activity for writing that we're going to be doing this we won't finish this all this this week um but it will probably will definitely start it is um this is from the text-based writing for non-fiction from from evermore and this is the north american owls unit i thought owls uh, this time of year it's perfect <laughs> so um, basically with this if you've never seen this before this is your teacher stuff and um, what they actually do so you've got your vocabulary initially so we read the word and its definition then we write the vocabulary word on the line then we read she reads the North American Owls nonfiction text then we've got some comprehension questions Then we've got a we've got a Venn diagram, so we're talking about the great great owls, we're comparing with the elf owls, and how they're alike and different, and then we've got a compare and contrast paragraph that explains how great owls and elf owls are alike and different. So we're using the graphic organizer and the science article, which was over here, to finish that. So as I said, we won't finish that this week. 
that this will take uh, two weeks, but then we'll be getting close to our break anyway. Um, but that's what we're good doing. We that's what we're going to be doing for writing this week. Plus anything that's in our learning la learning language arts through. It's really hard to say that learning language arts through literature. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, curriculum for this week. So as with the learning language arts through literature pack file folder, that moves down every day as the writing one does the same thing. So it just moves down each day. So once we've done Monday, then we'll move it on to Tuesday and so on. Okay, next on our schedule is history. So we have the uh, story of the world here. So this is the text that we read and we have our uh, activity guide. So we do history twice a week. We do it on a Monday and a Tuesday. So we're talking about Monday today, but obviously we are cross crossing over with other days as well. But for Monday, we read. I read the chapter in here in the story of the world uh, text. Then we do the uh, my story of the world notebook pages. So while I'm reading, she will either colour the colouring page that comes with the curriculum, um, or if she doesn't want to do that, she will um, draw a picture of what she has heard and remembered from the story and then write a little sentence about it. And then on the back, we have some questions for her to fill out. So we've got um, some questions relating to the text. Then we will do the map work. Then on the Tuesday, that's when we'll, if there are any books in addition to uh, the chapter, then I will read those either during the lesson or in our bedtime basket. There are not any this week, so I've got the 100 things to know about history and I'm just going to pop this into our bedtime basket. And then we are still reading chapters from the Ladybird Histories British History. So those will be in our bedtime basket. And then the activity is a wind poem that's the one i picked to do so i thought it sounded lovely so basically you put poems and wishes on a strip and then you hang it outside and it's part of the star festival that they do the tradition that they do and in the hopes that their wishes will come true and i thought that was really fun i think she'll really enjoy it so we can write that and then we can wave it outside and um hang it outside so the wind can carry your poem or wishes away so that'd be lovely so we'll do that on the tuesday Okay, next we'll have a break and then we'll come back for our science. So on a Monday, we are doing our science unit mammals from The Good and the Beautiful. So this is lesson five. It's all about elephants, which I know my daughter's going to love because she is a huge elephant fan. Um, so there's lots of different activities that go along with it every week. Um, so, for example, in this one, we have our word wall uh, vocabulary, which I pop into our on the back of our door, our word wall wall. And at the bottom, that's for writing. So... Um, you know just for fun little stories and things um but yes they're all at the top so we're learning quite a lot about elephants in here we've got uh, social behaviors of elephants we've got an elephant puzzle um, to learn about all the different characteristics of elephants we've got some fact cards about elephants and their different body parts with real life pictures which i really like there's the puzzle so you're putting it back together there's the uh, vocabulary words we've got some additional art um, that goes along with it and then there's an extension activity it says grade seven to eight um but we always read through it because my daughter always loves animals so she's always interested so this is about the sloth which and is another one of her uh very much liked animals so um i know she'll be really interested to hear about that and then at the end you always put your sticker there's, they always ask you to put various stickers onto your chart for where the um, animal is found last week we um were talking about animal tracks as part of one of our activities um i pulled out this game match a track last week um she loved it so i know she'll want to do it again so we'll pop that in as well okay next we have maths we are doing saxon uh, we are on saxon maths three um and every day she has a folder with the relevant worksheet in that she needs so we do the lesson together and this is where our morning binder comes in so we do our uh we do our calendar page as part of it I just made these pages for her. We do our poem memorization, which we're currently working on uh, this one. She graphs the weather and records the temperature. And then I'll just pick randomly one of the additional activities um, that we can do. So that we could do a dice roll fun. We can do a place value activity. I'll just randomly pick one. Then the main thing we do for Saxon first is our morning meeting. So they'll have a set of different uh, things you need to do as part of the morning meeting. And I, I made this uh, worksheet to go along with it. It's just dry erase and it just makes doing the morning meeting so much easier. Um, we can do our clock, we can do our coin cup, we can do the problem of the day. Uh, this is an addition one that I just put in for us to do to practice. There's always a pattern, so a number pattern. So you can write the date and everything else. 
then we'll do whatever lesson is required in the curriculum uh, and our section is very manipulative based so I usually get the manipulatives out ready to go for the lesson and then once we've completed that then we will do our worksheets those are what are, are in the folder periodically I'll just pop something fun in to do especially if it's a seasonal one and I just found this web of time one again in one of the Carson DeLosa um, activity uh, seasonal activity book and I'll just pop those this in it might not be Monday um, I put things in the folder but then if we don't get it done that day for whatever reason or uh, I'll just move it down to the next day or the day after we'll get it done one of the days this week um just because it's seasonal and i know she'll like it we'll have lunch and then we'll come back to do our afternoon activities sometimes if uh you know things are taking a little bit longer then we'll have lunch before we do either maths or science it just depends um but say for example this day we haven't we've um finished maths and we'll have our lunch and then we come to art now we're doing harcourt trophies um that's not harcourt trophies it's harcourt art and i love this curriculum um it's new to us this year and we're really enjoying it so we are talking about art and geometry at the moment um we did our um activity the week before and there is another activity this week to go with this one um which is lesson five uh geometric and organic forms and there is an artist workshop but because it's seasonal and everything else we're going to just do this so we're going to read this and then i've got an activity to go along with it for seasonal fun so we're going to do this cracked pumpkin mosaic craft i just thought it'd be really fun and um, so i've got all the paper in here ready to go and then next week we'll continue on and do lesson five but i just knew that she would really enjoy this it's seasonal it's relevant and um we can have some fun but i love this curriculum so far okay so on a monday and tuesday that's it then for the day um we'll do reading time and uh read aloud but usually we do those in our bedtime basket which i have made videos on previously okay so Tuesday, again, language arts. I'm not going get, to get it out again because you've already seen it. Um, we'll do our usual language arts. Then we will do our history uh, activity, which I talked about before, the um, poem, poem in the wind activity. Then we do science. So on a Monday, we do our biology. Then on a Tuesday and Wednesday, we do chemistry. So we are doing real science odyssey. And if you want to understand why I'm doing that, I have mentioned in previous videos, my daughter wanted, we were due to do chemistry this year, but my daughter really loves biology. So I switched to a different curriculum so we could do chemistry chemistry two days and biology two days which is working out great she loves it <laughs> and it's the best of both worlds so as it, but funnily enough she's actually really enjoying enjoying chemistry as well so that's great so we as I said we're doing real science odyssey for chemistry and I really like it she really likes it so that's great so this is my teacher's guide it also has student uh, pages which are in the folder as you can see um, I've just found my my teacher guides so we are talking about the periodic table um, so we have an activity in here so we are uh, matching up the elements to the correct uh, place where it goes so they always have a full my notebook page which I really like um, this is a student copy then we have our periodic table over here the second part of it and then we're doing a chemical symbol match and then she gets to choose what her favorite element is which i think is going to be a fun activity i think one of the reasons that we love it so much is it's very heavily experiment based and my daughter absolutely adores experiments and so do i so it works really well for us um to go along with the periodic table day um which is the day one this is the day two um i've just got the osborne periodic table jigsaw i've also got the lift the flap periodic table book um to read too and then i've got this one from scholastic which is just fantastic and the pictures in here are amazing so i think this one will particularly use to help her find which is her favorite because it goes into more depth um about each one then on day two for the uh, curriculum, it's an experiment, and in this case, we are doing a painting our favourite symbol, and um, with lemon juice, and then we heat it and everything else, and we see what happens. Um, then we'll do maths again. Sometimes we switch it. We'll do maths and science, science and maths. It just depends. Um, we'll have lunch and then we'll come back in the afternoon and we'll do IT. So we are doing typing two from the Good and the Beautiful. Um, we'll do this maybe for five ten minutes. Um, she 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 likes it so far. Um, it's just very simple. It's just uh, typing. Um, then you get your sticker when you're done. 
um, but it's really good practice so that's why we're doing it and then we're doing my IT curriculum so it's called The Journey um, it's based around the Animals of Farthing Wood book series basically the animals have to leave their home um, to find a new place to live so it's I'm including a lot of uh, cross-curricular activities into it um, so basically she'll get a letter um, every two weeks from Al there he is Al, who'll uh, give her her tasks and everything else. So currently she has to, um, in the last letter that she had, she had to research different habitats of places that they could possibly go to live. As I said, they're having to leave their home. Then she had to pick her favourite habitat, which she would put into her notebook. She drew it and researched about it and everything else. And then this week she's actually going to pick a habitat which she thinks would be suitable for them. And then we are going to create that habitat in PowerPoint. So that's where we're getting our IT skills into, into it. So she's learning how to manipulate um, images and searching safely on the internet and everything else, putting them into her presentation, PowerPoint presentation. Um, that she will then present her PowerPoint presentation. So again, cross curricular, we're getting some language arts in there too. Um, and then the second part of the letter was with regards to predator and prey relationships. So we're going to start researching about that. And then we'll be getting some Excel into it because we'll be um, gathering some data about which animals. Um, carnivores, herbivores, etc. You know, who's in danger, who's predator, who's prey and everything else. So that'll be the second part of the letter. And then she will get, so we'll probably do the first part this week, do the next part next week. And then she'll get another letter from Al with her next activities. So we're really enjoying it, um, the curriculum so far. I will eventually put it on TPT. I just want to get some clip art, some better clip art, because this was just something I found on uh, the internet <laughs> so I want to make it look better uh, it'd be cool to have some nice watercolor um, images to play with so that I can make my letters look really cool um, but yes I eventually will put on TPT but also I really want us to try it first because then I can see if there's anything that needs moving around and everything else and how it flows and um, keep keep stay tuned I guess you could say because I will eventually put it on there okay again Tuesday reading time read aloud again bedtime basket Okay, now on Wednesdays we've got our usual language arts um, and then we go to geography. Um, so we have two days of geography as we do with history. So the first geography day is more of your skills based, your traditional geography type stuff. Um, so we are using the Collins Primary Geography Investigations book. So we've been looking at landforms, landscapes and now we are on to water. So in our uh, Fun Friday, the week before, we did... Um, we're doing oceans and we talked about the water cycle so now we're actually continuing on with this and we are talking about water around us we, there are some discussion questions some keywords vocabulary i really like this curriculum so far it's new to us this year but we are really enjoying it so there's an investigation um so in this one she's drawing a plan to show rooms where water is found in her home um then there's some map work as well so she's using using an atlas to make a list of lakes around the world and then there's some pictures as well for her to um peruse and we're talking about liquid gas and solid so we'll do that and then i found in our skill shop and geography there is a section on rivers so we've got various different pages here all about rivers and then there is an activity to create a river scene and some river vocabulary as well so we'll do those we might not finish all of it in which case we'll just uh, pick up what we don't uh, finish this week next week okay then we have got uh, science which will be chemistry today you've already seen that lab the experiment that we're doing and then maths normal stuff then French is our next unit today I'm using this uh, McGraw Hill French for Children set. Um, so you get the DVDs, you get a course book, and then you get, I'm just gonna grab it out, an activity book. So it's for kids aged three to 10. We're really enjoying it um, so far. So we have we have learned so far how to say hello, how to answer when someone asks you by your name, the numbers from one to 10, and how to answer when someone asks you how old you are. And it's all bright and colorful, and they've got little fun activities um to go along with it so here you are counting different things um drawing different things so we're going to do this review just to make sure um that she's ready to move on to the next stage and then we are going to start unit two so we're going to learn whether you like something or not to say yes and no uh, the names of some popular and unpopular things um so 
so that's what we're up to with our French. I do supplement it with some YouTube videos as well for extra practice. Um, but yes, we're enjoying it so far. Okay, for our elective, which is next, we are doing animation. Uh, I have split our electives up, in, up throughout the year. So the first one we're doing is animation. And um, we are doing Lab 3, which is the Sticky Note Flip book. And again, this is a really fun book. We've been enjoying this too. Then again, we'll do Bedtime Basket. Okay, then we're on to Thursday. Again, language arts as usual. And then we've got our second day of geography, which is actually our unit study geography day. So we are doing my Bon Voyage Adventure Journal. Um, we're currently using a combination of Atlas Crate, uh, Kiwi, uh, not Kiwi, yeah, it's Kiwi Crate, which is the Atlas version, Universal Yams, and U Universal Yams Crate, and also Expedition Earth curriculum. So for each one, I try and tie them up if I can. So if we've got an Atlas Crate and a Kiwi Crate, I keep saying that. If we've got an Atlas Crate and a Universal Yams Crate, at the same country, we'll do them at the same time. But if we don't, then obviously we can't. Um, touch wood, so far we've been quite lucky. We've managed to tie them up round about. Um, but if, it, if, it, if we don't, it doesn't matter because we can see if there is an expedition on Earth for that particular country anyway. So we are doing... Um, animals that live there, where it's located, what do you know about the country, capital city, currency, continent, draw a landmark, and then the similar for the universal yums, except you draw your snacks, and what you know about the country. So we'll complete one of those for our uh, Alice crate or our kiwi crate, even universal yums crate. So we did that last week for Columbia. If there are Expedition Earth pages that go along with the Atlas crate or the universal yums, then we'll put those into our notebook too. We've also been using the Scholastic... Uh, Habitats books. So, for example, this one was a Cave for Friends. She has a passport and a ticket and everything fun like that. So, we finished Columbia. I don't actually want to start a new Universal Yums or Atlas Crate box yet because I want to segue into Rainforest because I'll see Columbia, South America. We want to, it's the perfect, it's the unit that I wanted to do anyway, and it's just the perfect se segue. So, we're actually going to go on to Rainforest. So I've got this rainforest unit from Twinkle, which is fantastic. It actually comes with PowerPoint presentations for each unit. Um, so we are going to start unit one, which is where are the rainforests. So we'll watch the PowerPoint uh, presentation and then we'll find some countries where rainforests are located. And we'll also start talking about climate in rainforests. Then the following week, we will talk about layers of the rainforest. I've also got this fun activity that is sorting rainforest animals. And then I've got the DK Found Out Forest book, um, which has got a wealth of information in here. And it has a section on rainforest, which is perfect. Again, this is just the start of the week of the project. Uh, this will take a couple of weeks. Okay, next we've got science. And I, I'm doing a, a, a curriculum, but also doing my own thing for the second day that we do biology. So for this day, it's me doing my own thing, and we are talking about cells. So the first thing we're going to do is use the human bio body unit from, well, human body book from Knowledge Encyclopedia, and we're talking about inside a cell, and I thought she can draw and label it, label the different parts. We're going to use the Osborne Science Encyclopedia. We're going to look at the plant cells, and then there is a QR code with a video about uh, uh, cell parts. And then again, animal cells, and there is also a video for us to watch about animal cells. We are going to use the first Encyclopedia of Science, again from Osborne, and there's another section on cells, but more importantly, there is a section on microscopes, on looking at cells under microscopes. So then, you guessed it, we're going to look at some cells under the microscope. So I do actually have some prepared slides already for different parts of the body and different tissues and also some blood ones, but we're also going to do this. So we're going to read about the body cells and then we're going to do our cheek cell and make our own slide too. Okay, then it's time for maths, lunch and everything else. And then once that's done, back in the afternoon, we are going to be doing our baking. So we are using my baking notebook pages. I'm just going to say now my daughter's absolutely loving baking this year. It's one of definitely one of her favourites. So I've got a range of different cookbooks that she can choose from. She has chosen to start with the Disney Princess Cookbook, which she absolutely adores. We've been taking this everywhere. Whenever we go out for to eat or anything, this comes with us. <laughs> um, so basically, she fills out, she chooses a recipe, we get the ingredients and everything else. Then she completes um, the notebook pages, so what she's making, the ingredients, um, how did she like it, she draws it once it's all it's completed and then what she change or keep the same. So we try to pick a mixture of a savoury and sweet um, 
the first week she picked fruit salad, so nice and healthy. Last week she picked Pascal's pancakes. This week she wants to do tiger stripe fudge. We don't eat a ton of sweets. She eats way less than I do. <laughs> um, so I don't mind, you know, making some sweet things. Uh, because it's, it's balance, as with everything, it's balance. And she doesn't eat a ton of sweets or sugary stuff. So it's fine. Um, so that's what she's wanting to do this week, tiger stripe fudge. Then our elective, again, is animation. And uh, she'll complete anything she didn't do. Um, in the lesson if she finished a flip book there is another option to make a painted one so if she wants to do that we'll do that and if she doesn't we'll just move on to the next lab in the animation book okay and now for fun friday we're reached the end of the week okay so on a fun friday we do logic um her journal we alternate um we do our literature studies we do our unit studies um we do um some kind of fun activity and then a game so for Friday this week, she will be doing her uh, pet journal, Homeschool with Pets from Thinking Tree. We love these. She will do the next um, activity in her literature unit for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is actually to make these chocolate bites and stick this into her lap book. So she's going to have so much fun doing that. For my literature unit, so we are finishing up um, our story from our original role story activity that we did, which is Ariel themed. Um, I base my literature units on four different novels. They're classic novels illustrated by Minor Luma. So because we're doing ocean for our unit study, I picked The Little Mermaid to do first. So um, for our literature activity to go along with uh, The Little Mermaid is finishing off the story, which she's almost done um, for her story writing page. And then she will design Little Mermaid poster um, advertising the movie or the book, whichever she'd like. Incidentally, I posted our Fun Friday video uh, previously to this video that we did uh, this week. So you can see what I'm talking about when I mention the next part. But we are continuing on with what we did last week in our Fun Friday. So we are uh, we, we did our food chain, then we picked an animal to, to research, she picked the shark. So we've been using the, uh, amongst others, the Julia Rothman uh, Ocean Anatomy book. She picked shark as her research project so she has drawn the shark and been uh, labeling him and writing uh, his information his anatomy and then she'll finish that because there's a couple that she didn't do and then we are using the magnificent book of ocean creatures to complete the fact file so each of my um animal fact file pages has a space for you to draw the animal and label it state where it lives and then complete the fact file which we are using the Ocean Creatures book four, so she can, she'll complete this um, information and about the great white shark. So that's what we'll do for our ocean unit today. And then we'll finish with our game, which is Dog Crimes. Uh, I picked this because we've been uh, finishing our writing unit on dogs. I thought it'd work well. It's a logic game. It's really fun. And it's dog themed. So that then we switch to reading time and read loud uh, in our bedtime basket. Some additional fun seasonal stuff. We have colouring pages that I printed off and stapled together, some autumn themed ones. And then her my Halloween activity book. Again, I just printed a bunch of um, printables off TBT, free ones, and just made a little book for her. So we've got language arts, maths, a combination of skills in here. So little uh, puzzles and colouring pages and everything else. So last week on our fun Friday, we uh, she did her create a creature. And then this is an option to make a fairy tale to go with your creature. So if she wants to do this on Fun Friday, we will. If not, we'll push it to the following Friday. It's just if she has time and if she wants to do it. We are doing quite a lot of things with the baking, um, with the literature unit baking and stuff. So we might run short of time. But if we don't, then she can um, make the fairy tale to go with her creature that she decorated and drew. But if not, then we'll do it the following week. We've got some little fun bookmarks that she can do throughout the week. If, throughout the week, if she wants to do some fun little bookmarks that for Halloween that I've made, well, that I haven't made, I've printed. I should say I definitely haven't made them. I printed them little joke ones, kind of corny, but you know, fun jokes. Um, my daughter calls jokes like this branch jokes. If you've ever watched um, Trolls, the second one, she calls them branch jokes. But I think she'll think they're funny anyway, and she can just decorate those throughout the week if she wants to. So that's everything for our week i hope that was interesting if you like this video let me know um i'll definitely consider doing more i did do a couple of them last year but as you can see from the length of the video they take a while to actually film um but if you do like them then definitely let me know and i will certainly put them on the list for future ones take care and i'll see you soon bye for now